Hey, what is going on everybody? Today we are gonna go over how to get the Solo Flawless Pit of Heresy emblem, this brand new emblem that you can see right here in the top left corner of my screen. This emblem is acquired by beating the whole entire brand new dungeon by yourself without dying once. And I know that sounds very difficult, but actually with this build and what I'm gonna show you, it can be very, very easily accomplished. The first thing I want you to know is that there is always going to be different builds there's always going to be a million different ways to accomplish the same thing this is just what worked best for me one that i kind of sat there and thought wow this is a lot easier now that i'm doing this so i hope that i can provide you the same information and help you achieve the emblem the first thing you're going to want for this build is Voidwalker Warlock. You're going to want the bottom tree Voidwalker for most of this, and we'll get to the next part of that, but for most of this, you're going to want bottom tree Warlock. Why is that? Well, there is actually a perk called Devour, which by holding your grenade it will actually regen your health and it will make it so whenever you get a kill with anything as long as devour is up you are getting health fully restored without it slowly coming up it fully restores it in an instant and that is very helpful when you're dealing with a lot of ads a lot of things that can kill you easily the next thing that i found to be very very helpful is actually double breach refractor. So there is a bug right now, and I'm gonna call it a bug, but there is a way that you can double down on breach refractor. Now breach refractor grants grenade energy on final blows with shield piercing weapons, or when a member of your fire team shuts down a barrier champion's ability. So why is this important? Well, if you pair Breach Refractor with Recluse anti-barrier rounds, if you are killing enemies, it doesn't matter if they have their shield up, but if you are killing enemies, you are getting anti-barrier rounds to proc. What that means is that your grenade will be back quite often, which means you can keep refreshing Devour as you see fit. Now, every time you get a kill with a weapon, as long as Devour is up, it'll reset the nine second timer that Devour has. However, if you do run out of that timer, this is very helpful. And it's also helpful for something called Hive Armaments. Hive Armaments is a perk you can receive in the Menagerie, Heroic Menagerie, and Crown of Sorrows Raid. You could get it in year two when Season of Opulence was there, and now you can get it, and once you get it once, you have it permanently unlocked. So I would grind for Hive Armaments by running Menagerie, Heroic Menagerie, and Crown of Sorrows Raid. This is going to be very, very helpful because it will give you heavy ammo on a grenade kill. The next thing that I found very, very nice for this build is Nezirak Sin. So if you are getting void damage kills, they increase your ability recharge rate. So what does that mean? Well, it means that your grenade can recharge your grenade. It can also mean that if you are using something like the Recluse, it is a void damage weapon. Kills increase the ability regen rate. So if you're getting kills with Recluse, you're getting your grenade back even faster when you have double breach refractor. That is why this build is so nice. Now the other part of this build that is very, very important here is what is called Oppressive Darkness. We have touched on Oppressive Darkness many times, and I'm sure a bunch of other videos that you have watched have as well, but Oppressive Darkness causing damage with a Void Grenade adds a weakened effect to enemies. This adds about 30% damage debuff, so the same as a Tractor Cannon or a Tether is what Oppressive Darkness adds. This is very, very helpful for damaging throughout the whole entire dungeon, but it's also very, very helpful for the final boss. If I had to give you some extra tips here, I would say run as many damage resist mods as possible I have one minor resist I have one major resist I have one boss resist I have a solar damage resistance and I have something else from year two as well called hive barrier this is a mod that is obtained through menagerie heroic menagerie and crown of sorrows and this makes it so when I receive hive damage I get 20% reduction in damage for 10 seconds. That is very helpful in the long run. Remember, you're by yourself. All these enemies are focused on you. So it is very, very helpful to have something like Hive Barrier where you can fight back and live longer. 
so all these things help finally my weapons i like to wreck izanagi's burden because it does a lot of damage you can proc honed edge pretty easily i also like to rock recluse for the reasons that i listed and finally i like to rock 21 percent delirium how do you obtain 21 percent delirium you need to do the season of the drifter pinnacle weapon and that is from playing gambit prime just do enough gambit prime to reset your infamy and boom you will have this weapon but i will say like i said before there are many different ways to achieve this i do think recluse is necessary for the build since anti-barrier rounds and avoid weapon really help but 21 percent delirium you don't have to use you can use something like a wendigo gl3 which is from the vanguard pinnacle from season of opulence or you can use a different heavy machine gun whatever you use as long as it gets the job done that is fine all right so enough talk about the build let's get into the first encounter now one thing that i find very very helpful for this first encounter is obviously when you go and you kill the first knight you're going to get your sword what I find next is that I like to clear out as many ogres and as many other knights and other adds as fast as possible. What helps here is constantly having your devour up, constantly using recluse, and constantly using delirium, izanagis, etc, etc. As far as the sword knight goes with the shield, whenever he swipes at you, you can actually hold block and that will prevent him from killing you. That will prevent him from doing any damage actually. You also don't use any sword ammo when you use the super, so if you want to conserve ammo, that's the best way to do it. It just will take a little bit longer. You can only kill the knight with the shield with your left click or your R1 or your right bumper. So just make sure that you're using left click and super. That's all you're going to use. Also, block when the boss attacks you. For the wizard, I like to stay as far away from the room as possible will clear all the ads and I like to just kind of range the wizard out however another method that I found to work is swapping to a solar weapon in your energy slot and killing the other wizards in the room before you focus on the main one remember blocking does work it doesn't kill the wizard but blocking does work against the shots finally with the shrieker this one is the easiest one I ignore the ogres completely I let them shoot at me while I'm deflecting back at the shrieker this just makes it a little bit harder to aim on the shrieker but over Overall, it's pretty dang obtainable. The Shrieker is probably the easiest out of the three. Finally, when all of those are dead and I have killed as many ogres, knights, acolytes, etc. as I possibly can, I go to the final room and on to the next challenge. Now, here is something that I wanted to say for this next part. When you're jumping down and you need to get in the loading zone for the ogres, what I find to be the most helpful thing to do if you're on PC, I don't know if this happens on console, so console players, please leave me a comment if this happens to you. I would love to know if there's a fix for console players so I can put it down. On PC though, what I have to do is I have to lock my frames to 30 frames per second, and then I move into the zone slowly. This about 50% of the time stops my problem from happening. So when I am in the zone, I'm slowly crossing the line. I sometimes die here and I sometimes don't. It's a bug that they know and are aware of and they're going to fix it very soon. But for right now, this is what you have to do if you're on PC. When you do fall into the pit with the ogres, what I like to do is I like to get the one on the far right side done first. And I'll leave a link to a map if you're curious as to how the room is configured. You get confused, you get lost. I'll leave a whole entire map for you guys to follow. But basically what I like to do is I like to hook the right side of the room and I like to make sure all the ads are cleared out of the right and then I like to bait an ogre and start moving. The good thing about being a warlock here is that you can actually use what I like to call the skate. So a lot of people you'll see them doing this with the orb is they'll pick up the orb and then they'll jump, melee, and quickly jump again. Console players, I believe you can do this as well, but on PC, since this is the one that I'm the most comfortable doing this with, I jump and then right when I melee, I jump again. It's a weird timing, but you're just gonna have to get it down. This is how you sword skate. This is how you use the ball to skate as well. This'll help you a lot getting away from the ogres. You can pretty much run laps around them if you get comfortable with it. But once all three are done here, make sure that you have some sort of healing ability ready to go because sometimes the ogres can chase you down. And that has happened to me and I almost have died multiple times to this. Now the next room. So I'm gonna teach you guys the way that I believe is the most appropriate way to do this. I will not teach you the cheese here. There is a cheese. You guys can look outside of this video for that, but I don't wanna teach you guys that way because I'd rather teach you guys a legit way to beat it and not the cheating way. So for this room, what you have to do, 
obviously is you have to get the balls you have to dunk it into the thing I, I, I don't know what to call this thing but you have to dunk it in that thing so what you want to do is you want to kill a knight with your Izanagi's burden if you're using Izanagi's this is what I recommend here you want to kill a knight with Izanagi's while having devour up at the same time delirium is very nice here and so are hive armaments this is where your armaments are really going to shine what I like to do is have my devour ready to go kill things with their clues to get my grenade back use a grenade to get armaments proc and then shred a bunch of stuff with delirium use Izanagi's to kill the knight pick up the orb throw another grenade at those enemies so I can get armaments to proc again dunk the ball get my devour propped again if it's not and then I like to either use delirium or I like to use Izanagi's on the knights that will spawn up top this one is probably the one that you're gonna need a lot of practice with but once you get a rhythm down this is actually a ton of fun I have a lot of fun with this one just make sure that you're constantly refreshing the thing in the middle the totem what I like to do for the totem though is not worry as much because at the beginning I found myself worrying a lot about the totem but as time progressed the totem became very very easy for me so what you want to do is just get off it until you hear the noise that it turns red and then come back to it but you'll get the rhythm down I believe it it might take you a few tries but you'll get the rhythm down now for the next encounter what you want to do on the jumping part here is you want to jump when the lantern is moving away from you and then you want to just fall down and kind of hug onto the side as appropriately when you're falling down i haven't died on the falling down section but i feel like i could have many times so just trust me when the lantern is moving away from you that's when you want to jump now when you are down into the pit and you need to get the three i will leave another map in the link in the description so that you guys can follow an easy map of how to get through here but basically what i like to do and i actually died here on my first attempt of making it this far on solo flawless this is where i died was i fell off a rock so what i like to do is make sure i'm as careful as possible taking deep breaths and jumping onto these platforms as i see fit and it's just pretty simple from there you just need to find three wizards and kill them and it's pretty simple from there however the platforming is what gets hard so just breathe have some good patience with yourself and you will be fine i died here once because I was stupid didn't throw a grenade didn't light my pathway so I jumped into nothing but when I lived through here that was when I was very careful and I just made sure that I had everything ready there is absolutely no rush you have as much time as you need now on to the final boss so this is where the build is actually going to take a turn so instead of using bottom tree void walker what I like to do here is use top tree actually I like to use what is called chaos accelerant on here which overcharges my grenade and we will go over that in just a second what i also like to use here is tranquility with auto loading holster firing line does not need either of these but i like tranquility because mine has five shots in the mag with a pended mag yours does not have to have this you don't even need to use tranquility there are multiple ways to finish this again i like to use recluse and I actually like to use Anarchy for this. Now, why Anarchy? I will, I will tell you when we are on boss damage. When you first start this room, Anarchy is very helpful for these sword knights, these sword bearer knights. I like to move to the left, take out all the adds in the room with the shielded knight, and then when he tries to swing at me, I hold block, and then I swing twice, hold block, swing twice, and if you have your super up you can actually block so that when he swings you sword twice pop super and then you can get two more swipes in on him that's the most efficient way to do that but anyway after this knight is dead i like to take the charge move over towards the shrieker side kill as many ads in my way drop the charge throw a grenade in on the shrieker side so that i have armaments procced for my anarchy and then i like to take the ball and dunk it on the shrieker side after i have dunked it there the boss is usually out of the way that's why i like to do that after i've dunked it there i wait for another knight to spawn making sure that the shrieker can't hurt me this is where your healing rift is going to be very nice and i kill the knight that's coming after me i go and i block the shot from the shrieker kill all the adds and i rinse and repeat but this time i take the ball back to the first side now why am i doing this though in particular the reason for this is this is my rhythm this is my method that i like to use but also it's very very nice to get out of the way of everything and make sure that the boss is not hurting you this is going to help you in the long run trust me 
So when two balls are dunked now, we have some adds that will spawn again, and you only have the wizard left. You want to throw a grenade at the wizard, hopefully an overcharge grenade so that it gets as much range as possible, and we will get to that in a second. So, now that I have picked up my final sword and I'm going over to the wizard, making sure that I'm right clicking all the adds in there with the sword and the wizard finally, the wizard dies, I bait the boss over to the other sides and then I dunk the ball on the final side. The boss must be separated from you and the crystal. This is very important because we are not using a well of radiance here. The boss can one shot you with his sword if you are not careful and you are not getting him to fire his shots into the crystal. So what I like to do here is fire two anarchies onto the boss, hold a charge void grenade so I can get oppressive darkness, throw it onto the boss, I pop my vortex nova bomb super at the boss, and then I finally fire two more anarchies, I kill all the cursed thrall with a recluse to get my grenade back, so that I can throw another oppressive darkness grenade at the boss overcharged, two more anarchies, my final two shots of anarchy, and then I like to go ham with my tranquility. This will, if you do this right, this will do about half health on the boss, but expect to three phase this boss. After that, it is just rinse and repeat. Once you have killed the boss, you can rock your new emblem and don't tell anybody that you watched a guide on how to do it. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw here, a like would be greatly appreciated as well as a subscription and maybe you want to catch me on Twitch every once in a while. We just hit 2100 followers and I cannot thank you enough and we just hit YouTube partner which means I can put monetization on the ads that you're already seeing. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching again, love your face and until the next video, I'll see you later.